And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. This is your boy Fly Island Guy. Today we are back in Belgium once again, and uh, we are going to be heading over to Cardiff in I don't know, was that England or Cardiff and Wales? Maybe Cardiff and Wales. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, let's get some of these monitors off the screen. Oh, these windows off the screen. Okay. So, before we get started, the current weather right now in uh, Belgium, we're looking at winds calm, visibility 10 kilometers or more, broken clouds all the way up to 20,000 feet. Our cruising altitude today is going to be 43,000 feet, and we have a scheduled flight time of 1 hour and 12 minutes. Over in Cardiff. pulling the weather up here uh, things are looking equally good over there We're looking at winds out of 110 at 11 knots visibility is 10 kilometers or more and there are apparently no clouds in the vicinity so hmm. that seems like a lie <laughs> but um, everything is looking good though so shouldn't have too too much issues there although i am uh just looking on the on the weather radar and i am seeing some clouds in the area but uh in terms of precipitation nothing there to worry about so should have a fairly smooth flight and uh yeah let's get started we already have our engine started uh our we're fairly i wouldn't say we're too heavy today but we do have a pretty full load as far as cargo is concerned so um, that's given us a bit of a higher rotate speed today we're looking at about 103 knots for rotation but outside of that we're pretty much ready to depart so i'm just here bringing up the map so we can see where we're going we're departing on runway 5 left today, which is going to be, uh, I guess, a pretty substantial taxi on the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off our passenger briefing. And uh, once that's done, we will be ready for takeoff. Okay, let's get started. May I have your attention, please? Welcome aboard the Citation CJ-4 aircraft. Your flight crew will make every effort to make your trip a pleasant one. At this time, please refer to the passenger briefing card located near your seat for important safety-related information. Smoking is prohibited aboard this aircraft while the no-smoking lights are illuminated and prohibited in the lavatory at all times. Aviation regulations require passenger compliance with lighted no-smoking and seatbelt signs, placards, as well as flight crew instructions. For taxi, takeoff, and landing, please ensure that your lap belt and shoulder harness are fastened and all portable electronic devices are turned off. Tables, luggage, and loose articles must be stowed and secured. Seats must be in the upright and outboard position and your headrest extended for instructions located near your seat. To fasten your lap belt, place the flat metal end into the buckle. Pull on the lap belt strap to tighten the lap belt. To fasten the shoulder harness, pull the shoulder harness strap across and in front of you and hook the metal end onto the stud located on your lap belt. To release your lap belt, depress the latch release on the top portion of the buckle. To release the shoulder harness, unhook the metal end from the stud. Because of the possibility of unexpected turbulence, please keep your lap belt securely fastened about you at all times while in your seat. In the event of cabin depressurization, oxygen masks will automatically drop from overhead compartment. Locate the nearest mask, pull the mask down to the full length of the tubing, and place it over your nose and mouth. Adjust masks by pulling the elastic straps and breathe normally. Don your mask prior to assisting others with their masks. 
an emergency exit is located at the right side of the aft cabin. To open the emergency exit, remove the plastic panel covering the release handle. Turn the handle in the clockwise direction. Pull the top of the emergency exit inward, lifting the base out of the opening and into the cabin. Discard the emergency exit overboard. Exit the cabin by stepping through the opening onto the wing and continue forward off the wing. The main entry door, which you use to enter the aircraft, may also be used as an emergency exit. To open the main entry door, first push in on the inner paddle located above the inner handle. Second, pull down on the inner handle approximately 90 degrees. Push the door open and lower the stairs to exit the aircraft. Life vest locations are placarded near your seat. To don the life vest, tear open the storage bag and remove the vest. Place the life vest over your head. Wrap the strap around your waist, buckle, and tighten the strap. For children, wrap the belt around a leg, buckle, and tighten the strap. Inflate the life vest after exiting the plane by pulling downward on both red tabs. If the life vest fails to inflate, blow into the manual inflation tubes attached to the vest. For information on the location and use of fire extinguishers, as well as other emergency or survival equipment, refer to your passenger briefing card or consult your flight crew. Thank you and have a pleasant flight. All right. So, passenger briefing is done. And, uh, oops. I just took a wrong turn here. <laughs> but, uh, we should be nearing the end of the runway soon. I decided to just take a slow taxi today, really, just to um, kind of get myself fully in the mood to do this flight. Um, as I mentioned before, I guess I lost a little bit of motivation to, to fly the CJ4 nowadays. But uh, should be exciting times coming up. As far as the CJ4 is concerned, even our European European tour, as um, our European tour is pretty much over now, and we're actually heading back west. So Cardiff is going to be kind of the first stop on our way out west, um, and the plan is to head back across the pond. Um, head to uh, Canada and then come back down uh, into the Caribbean. We'll just take a quick break and then we will start our VATSIM journey in the United States. So, see how things go over there. I'm looking forward to getting into VATSIM. Uh, we are just here at the uh, entryway to runway 5 left. And uh, just going to get things prepared. So get our landing lights and strobes on. Um, let's get this guy off. We're in present position mode. So we are good to go here. And we also activate takeoff mode. Good, good, good. And I think that is about it. Flaps already set. Um, yeah, man. We're ready to get out of here. Alright. No traffic is coming. It's good. Alright, looking for 103 for rotation. Let's 
and somebody described the CJ4 as a rocket or a fighter jet. <laughs> That's how it feels sometimes. Your more time long. We are up and away, just trimming for a steady climb out. We're gonna gear up. I'm just doing a climb thrust. Gonna synchronize our heading and let's turn on autopilot. Let's go heading mode. And I'm also gonna go into flight level change. Set speed to 240. Right. And let's adjust our heading to get back onto our flight plan. So we're just making our way out of Brussels. As usual, getting some good views on the way out. So let's get back on our flight plan and we should be good to go after this folks so once we get everything stabilized as usual we're just gonna get some quick information on Cardiff um, Cardiff is a an area that I've heard about but I don't really know too much about it myself and so I'm kind of curious um, as to kind of what it's all about. So, get our landing lights off as we've crossed 10,000. And I believe we can go to standard altimeter as well. this is the airport that we just left way down there in the distance I'm, I'm always amazed at the climb performance of the CJ4 it's just ridiculous how how high it gets this quickly I'm going to go ahead and arm nav mode and it should turn on to be flight plan once we get close enough all right but in terms of where we're heading today we're going to go to Cardiff so what is there to know about Cardiff let's see Trying to get some good information on here. And I'm on a site specifically about Cardiff. But it's really talking a lot about kind of things to do there. It's a it's a really touristy site. I, I really want to uh, 
learn kind of more about the history and stuff as well. You know what I mean? All right. So, Cardiff is the capital city of Wales. Well, the capital and largest city of Wales. So, if you, if you don't know, the United Kingdom is made up of uh, England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. So, Wales is located in the uh, southern part of the United Kingdom. So it forms a principal area of officially known as the city and county of Cardiff, and the city is the 11th largest in the United Kingdom. So located in the southeast of Wales, near the Cardiff capital region, Cardiff is the county town of the historic county of Glamorgan. So Glamorgan should be familiar, especially those for, for those of us who are into cricket. Um, it belongs to the Eurocities network of the largest European cities. Small town until the early 19th century, its prominence as a port for coal and mining began in the, in, in the region, helped its expansion. So in 1905, it was ranked as a city, and in 1955, pro pro proclaimed sorry, the capital of Wales. So Cardiff built up area covers a large area outside the county boundary, including the towns of Dinas, Dinas Paulus and Panar. So Cardiff is the main commercial center of Wales as well as the base for the Senate. And at the 2011 census, the Unitary Authority area population was put at 346,000 and the wider urban area at 479,000. In 2011, it ranked sixth in the world in National Geographic magazine list of alternative tourist destinations and it's the most popular destination in Wales with 21.3 million visits in 2017. So Cardiff is a major center for television and film production such as Doctor Who, Torchwood, Torchwood and Sherlock and is the Welsh base for the main national broadcasts broadcasters. What else do you have going on here? So, etymology, which is an interesting phrase. So, Kerdid, I believe that's how it's pronounced. The Welsh name of the city derives from the Middle Welsh Kerdif. The change from diff to did shows the colloquial alteration of Welsh, F and DD, and was perhaps also known, well, was also driven by folk etymology so the sound change had probably first occurred in the middle ages both forms were current in the Tudor period and Cardiff has its origins in post-Roman Brythonic words meaning the fort of the Taff the fort probably refers to the to that established by the Romans and Kier is Welsh for fort Diff is in effect a form of Taff and the river which flows by Cardiff Castle with the T showing consonant mutation to D and the vowel showing affection as a result of a gen genitive case ending. So the anglicized Cardiff was derived from Cardiff with the Welsh F barred as FF as it also happens in Taff and Landaf. Don't really know what a lot of that means but all right. So there's a lot of history here on uh, Cardiff, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip a lot of that. Let's be honest, you don't really, really need to know about all that. But uh, the center of Cardiff is relatively flat and bounded by hills to the east and north and west. Its location influences development as the world's largest coal port. Notably, its proximity and easy access to the coal fields of the South Wales Valleys. 
The highest point in the local authority area is Garth Hill, above sea level, about, which is about 307 meters or 1,000 feet above sea level. So Cardiff is built on reclaimed marshland on a bed of Triassic stones. The reclaimed marshland stretches from Chepstow to the Ely Estuary, which is the natural boundary of Cardiff and the Vale of Glamorgan. Triassic landscapes of this part of the world are usually shallow and low-lying, consistent with the flatness of the sand of Cardiff, and the classic Triassic marl, sand, and conglomerate rocks are used predominantly throughout Cardiff as building materials. Many of these Triassic rocks are purplish, especially the coastal marl found near Penneth, and one of the Triassic rocks used in Cardiff's Cardiff is radar stone, a freestone, which, as its name suggests, is quarried in the radar district. So Cardiff has also imported some materials from uh, for buildings. Devonian sandstone from the Breaking Beacons has been used, and most famously, the buildings of Cathays Park, the civic center of in the center of the city, are built of Portland stone from Dorset. A widely used building stone in Cardiff is the yellow-gray Liassic limestone rock of the Vale of Glamorgan, including the rare Sutton stone. So Cardiff is bordered by, to the west by the rural district of the Vale of Glamorgan, also known as the Garden of Cardiff, to, to the east by the city of Newport, to the north by the South Wales Valleys, and to the south by the Severn Estuary and Bristol Channel. The River Taff, the river Taff winds to the city centre and together with the River Ellis flows into the freshwater Cardiff Bay. A third river, the Rimney, flows to the east of the city directly into the Severn, Severn Estuary. So Cardiff lies in the Glamorgan Heritage Coast stretching westward from the Penneth and Barry commuter towns of Cardiff with striped yellow-blue Jurassic limestone cliffs. The Glamorgan coast is the only part of the, the Celtic Sea with exposed Jurassic geology. This stretch of coast with its reefs, sandbanks, and serrated cliffs was a ship graveyard, and many ships sailing to Cardiff during the Industrial Era were wrecked on the, this hostile coastline in west-south westerly gales. Smuggling, deliberate shipwrecking, and attacks on ships were also common. Alright, so... The climate in Cardiff, um, so it's in the northern temperate zone, has a maritime cl climate marked by mild weather that is often cloudy, wet, and windy. Summers tend to be warm and sunny with the average maxima or the average high temperatures between 19 and 22 degrees C, which is about between 66 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Winters are fairly wet, but rainfall really excessive and frost rare. Spring and autumn feel similar, and the temperatures tend to stay above 14 degrees C. Also, the average annual uh, daytime temperature, so 14 degrees C, the average temperature, yeah. Rain is unpredictable at any time of the year, although showers tend to be shorter in summer. The northern part of the county being higher and inland tends to be cooler and better than the city center. So Cardiff's maximum and minimum monthly temperatures uh, average 21.5 degrees C and 2.1 degrees C in, in February. And for Wales, the temperature average is 19.1 degrees C. So Cardiff experiences less rainfall than average for Wales. It falls um, on 146 days in an average year. The total annual rainfall of 1151.9 millimeters and monthly rainfall patterns show that from october to january average monthly rainfall in cardiff exceeds 100 millimeters each month the wettest month being december the 125.3 millimeters and the driest from april to june okay so let's see what else is here. Uh, uh, I think I might. Okay. 
So last part. So in terms of transportation, if you want to get into or around Cardiff, like what do you do? So you have the Cardiff Central Railway Station, which is the largest railway station in Wales, with nine platforms coping with over 12.5 million passengers a year. It provides uh, direct service to Bridgend and Altitude. Newport. And a long distance cross rail service to Wrexham and Holyhead and service to Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester and London. So Cardiff Central Station is situated within the southern border of what was known as Temperance Town, a residential area within Cardiff. You also have the Metro, which is uh, the, an, an integrated public transport system on development in southeast Wales, centered on Cardiff. And the project is to include the electrification of some of the existing railway lines. Four lines are under construction with a further three planned. And the first lines will link Penneth and Cardiff Bay to Raider, Treherbet, Aberdeer, and Mether Pidville. The plans to also serve Pony, Pony Plum, St. Melons, and Porth Tater. So in terms of air travel, uh, you have domestic and international air links to Cardiff and South, we South and West Wales. Uh, that's provided by Cardiff Airport. So that's actually where we're heading today. Um, the only international airport in Wales, the airport lies in the village of Roos, 10 miles west of the city. And there are regular bus uh, services linking the airport with Cardiff Central Bus Station and a train service with Roos, Cardiff International Airport Railway Station to Cardiff Central. So the M4 motorway connects Cardiff with Swansea to the, the west and Newport and London to the east with four junctions on the M4 including one with the A48. A470 provides an important link from the city to the heads of the Valleys Road and when completed the A4232 A4 also known as the Peripheral Distributor Road will form part of the Cardiff Ring Road system along with the M4 motorway between junctions 30 and 33. Cardiff also has a comprehensive bus network whose providers include the municipal bus company Cardiff Bus, Nat Group, Stagecoach South Wales, and Press Simru. Uh, National Express and Megabus provide direct service to major cities such as Bristol, London, Newcastle, Upon Tyne, and Manchester. So there's actually lots of other cool and important facts here, but I think we're going to end there for now. Uh, we are actually at our cruising altitude now, uh, which should actually be 43,000, but I'm just going to leave it where it is. Um, because of our short flight today, I'm not really expecting uh, to be in cruise for too, too long. Yeah. Stop descent's already been calculated. Um, we're going to be doing an NDB ILS approach today. So, going to see how well that turns out. But, uh, yeah, that's the plan. Um, so, when I get back, we're going to be starting our approach into Cardiff. And um, I'm actually hoping that's not going to be too long. Uh, just looking at our waypoints here and the flight plan. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be a very long, very long distance until we hit our top of descent. Probably going to be in the next maybe, I don't know, 100 nautical miles or so. The actual trip is pretty short, so uh, we're going to be landing. We should be uh, starting our descent fairly, fairly soon. I'd venture to say in the next like 30 40 minutes all right so i'll catch you guys when i get back and uh hopefully we're gonna have a smooth uh, arrival into cardiff as i said we are now kind of moving our way out of europe and we're going to be heading back to the west so i'm really excited about that all right but we'll discuss that later on in the meantime i am going to try not to over speed and I shall talk to you guys later. All right. A 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We have started our descent into Cardiff. So, uh, I'm just trying to get a couple things done here. And I don't really know what's going on with the the live weather right now, but the airplane is getting tossed around. All right. So, let me tell you what's going on. We are... Right now, doing this uh, CDF 1C arrival um, into Cardiff International Airport. And as you can see, we come through Abdul, we're coming down to BRI, and then we're going to be heading straight towards the airport. And we're currently, uh, we have our, our uh, I forget what it's called, uh, I think it's ADF tuned to. Um, 388.5 so we're basically kind of pointing there and what's going to happen is once we cross over the airport we're going to be doing this uh, NDB ILS DME approach we're just going to have us pretty much approaching the airport once we cross over the uh, NDB we're going to turn to heading 277 and we're just gonna go out for eight nautical miles, and then we're gonna start our turn uh, back towards uh, 117, and hopefully, like, intercept the localizer and coming for a landing. Now, the only other thing that we have to look out for here is that we're gonna be at 3,000 feet, but after we cross the uh, NDB, we're gonna be descending to 2,500 feet or uh, 5 DME away from the uh, away from the NDB and then at 5 DME we're going to descend to 2,200 and that's the altitude that we're going to be at in order to uh, intercept the localizer all right so the only thing here that I'm always kind of confused about is how do I know um, how do I know the remaining uh, well like, like the distance away? I keep forgetting how to do that. I'm sure it's supposed to show up around here somewhere, but. Uh, I haven't flown. I don't fly these. I don't fly these approaches very often, so I don't really know exactly where to look. But as you could see, our ADF is tuned to 388.5, and uh, we're actually pointing towards the. Uh, we're actually pointing directly towards it. So. We should be good to go. We have this arrow here showing that we are heading towards it. So, a lot of this is still sort of guesswork for me, but uh, it is what it is. <clears throat> what we can do though is we can go to. Uh, synchronize our heading. And we can go into heading mode. Because we're going to need to do this in order, we're going to need to be in heading mode in order to properly fly this approach. So, I'm also going to get my landing lights on. I've got to turn those on. I wish I knew which of these kind of showed the distance. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of ran into this issue last time.
and sort of threw me off a little bit. This is when I was uh, flying into Iceland, I believe, or Greenland, one or two. Oops. Okay. Just kind of get a look at the scenery as we come through. Things looking pretty good around here. We are coming in a little fast though, so I'm going to probably want to slow down a bit. But I think we're descending pretty aggressively, so um, I'll leave it as is. We should be we should be good to go. I'm not too worried about it. But we should be getting to 3,000 feet right above the airport. Let's see, how far away are we from the airport now? Right, we're about 12 nautical miles. And I believe I see the airport straight ahead here. This is where we're heading. And we're going to be actually landing this way. So when we're coming back in on... Uh, <clears throat> On one two zero, oh, well, actually it was one one seven, is the actual course. All right, the other thing that I need to set is our decision height. So decision height is 405 feet so we can do 410 that's fine that's set so minimums are set which is good to go is this another airport here interesting there's another airport here as well Don't know which one this is, dude. But I'm pretty sure this is the airport we're heading to here. craft so that it points to the points correctly to the uh, NDB I think once Altitude. when the NDB flips we can start our outbound course of 277 seven. although now I'm kind of confused <laughs> actually we're supposed to be going this way is that it? yeah I was pretty sure that's the airport in front of us here Okay, so we've passed it, past ADF-1. So it says we should be going to 277, but it kind of so confused. <laughs> 
All right, so we're just gonna head. We're gonna stay actually in this direction here. We're just gonna head, head outbound, and we'll let this count up to eight nautical miles. And what we'll also do is uh, let's descend to twenty-five hundred. Altitude. Okay. Let's just do vertical speed. So right now when it counts up to... Right now I'm using the um, distance away from the airport. It should be actual distance away from the uh, VOR or the the NDB, but this is fine. So once we get to five nautical miles out, we shall descend to 2200 which you can do now. Okay, and let's go down. I'm going to start getting our flaps ready so that we can land soon. Here we are in beautiful Wales, folks. Um, I should have turned back a little bit. Yeah. Probably should have stayed where we were. Okay, now we're below the glide slope. All right, I'm gonna go. Landing gear. Landing gear. Let's go full flaps. Landing gear. And let's start our. Landing gear. Turn to one seven seven. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Let's go gear down. We might have taken this a little too sharp. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Yeah. What the heck? Oh, not 177. It's 117. What are we doing? Oops, I read it wrong, folks. Kind of nowhere near the localizer right now, and we are really close to the airport. Okay. All right, here we go. So I'm going to stay on this track, and I'm going to go ahead and activate approach mode as well. And if everything works out and nobody hates me, we should... I don't know. We should connect to the localizer and the glide slope. <laughs> Hopefully come down safely. Don't know if that's going to happen though. Yeah, let's 
look here. So I think we're a little too close to the airport right now. Airport should be off to our about two o'clock. Let's see what happens, folks. Right, approach mode should come online very, very soon. But we are way too high. Okay. I'm going to abort. <coughs> and... I'm going to come a little further back. Kind of mess up the approach a little bit. And right now I'm sort of using uh, Navigraph as a guide as to where where I should be. <laughs> it's not the most accurate. I'm also going to keep an eye on on our glide slope as well. So ideally we just want this to be we want to be below the glide slope. And right now we're above it, which means that you're never going to capture it. Okay. But overall, here we are in beautiful Wales, folks. All right, we are in the good position now. So below, below the glide slope, which is good. And what I'm trying to do here is just trying to do like a gentle turn back to capture the localizer again. Wow, look at this. Okay, here we go, folks. We're going to start this turn again. Right. We pretty much should have everything ready to go to uh, intercept the localizer. I wonder what this big building is here. Don't know. All right, and we are below the glide slope as well, which is good. And I think we're in a position to intercept and land correctly now. Everything is tuned. The localizer is tuned. Uh, one ten dot seven. So yeah, should be in a good position now. I think that's the runway out there. Yeah. 
Why is it not connecting? Okay. Oh, there it is. It was, it was, it was, it was. Or maybe it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't actually. Alright, not sure what's going on there, but I honestly just want to land <laughs> land the plane now. So we actually have visual recognition of the runway. So let's just turn and come in for a landing. I'm gonna get lined up. Autopilot. Because this plane is doing the most right now. So. Airport is directly ahead. to show what happened here we're in approach mode we have the localizer frequency tuned normally hit an approach should do the trick but I guess it didn't do it today sure what this airport is beside if anybody knows what this airport is please let me know but the airport that we're trying to get to is straight ahead Pretty low right now. Looks like we're passing another airport off to the left. I think. I don't know. I thought these were runways, but they're not. I think they're power lines or something. Just gonna bring up the taxi map here as well so I can see where we're going. Uh, just so glad that the weather is good so that we were able to just do a regular approach or visual approach in. what that off to the right is but it looks pretty good minimums minimums gonna continue For a smooth landing. Landing time lock. Beautiful. Let's 
spoilers are up. Nose wheel has touched down and I'm just gonna coast to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cardiff. All's well that ends well. <laughs> Well is down and uh, we're just gonna taxi back to the to the terminal. This is actually a third party scenery available, flightsim.to as usual. Just look for EGFF. All right, so while we're here, let's get everything cleaned up. Strobes and landing lights can come off. Light director can come off. This is a beautiful third party scenery here for Cardiff International Airport. Looking absolutely stunning. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull into one of these gates here. come off and engines come off as well engine off time log flight is finished it has been monitored by on air right. got to raise the flaps folks and here we are in Cardiff hope that you guys enjoyed the flight my apologies for messing up that approach so badly but you know it happens sometimes we are going to continue our exit of Europe uh, in the CJ4 so uh, next flight I'm gonna try and head back to the Faroe Islands if it's possible um, and let's get back to more familiar territory all right Really, really appreciate it, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video if you see fit. Uh, right now, videos are coming out weekly, um, but still, they're going to be coming out on the regular, right? Outside of that, this is your boy Flyland Guy saying, stay safe, and most importantly, stay fly. I'm out. Peace.